a lot of investors ask this question, where should I invest? What is like the best market to invest in, right? And, you know, you get a lot of out-of-state investors, y'all. Uh, people that are coming from expensive markets like California, New York, New Jersey, that dirty hellhole Portland, right? And a lot of these investors are looking for low-cost cash flow markets, right? And there's a ton of them, right? And then there's, you know, a lot of them are very popular, and you, you hear them popping up all the time, right? Like Detroit, Michigan, Cleveland, Ohio, Memphis, Indianapolis, Kansas City, right? Baltimore, Philly, okay? Toledo, Ohio, right? Uh, Dayton, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, right? Cincinnati, Ohio, okay? You, the, these are a lot of the really popular markets that pop up. Uh, constantly, right? And and you see a lot of people on forums like Bigger Pockets or asking questions in Facebook groups like, which one of these cash flow markets is the best for me, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, I've worked in many of these markets, y'all, and I'm here to tell you, six to one, half dozen to the other, right? Essentially, the majority of these markets, very similar, and almost all of them, it's going to necessarily, it's not necessarily going to matter to you and your investment portfolio which market you choose. In almost all of these markets, what really matters, y'all, is which neighborhood in that market you choose to invest, right? Which property in which neighborhood, which property management team you pick, right? That is what is really going to uh, affect your, um, your uh your your investment okay that's what's really going to affect your investment right now having said that from the title you should be aware right this video is specific to toledo ohio the toledo market now i'm not here and i'm not going to tell you toledo's better than detroit toledo's better than cincinnati toledo's better than memphis right it's up to you to choose one of these markets. I think, again, it's all going to be very similar, right? But what I want to do today with this show is get hyper-focused on those of you that have chosen Toledo, right? What I want to do is go over where you should invest in Toledo. Not necessarily saying you need to pick Toledo over the others, but if you've decided to pick Toledo today, we are going to talk about three neighborhoods that I think y'all need to be targeting in 2024 and beyond. Let's go! <laughs> All right, y'all. Today, we are going to be going over three neighborhoods in Toledo, Ohio that I think investors need to pay attention to. I think investors need to focus on. I think investors need to buy in, okay? As discussed previously, y'all, I'm not saying you got to pick Toledo over some other market, but if you have chosen Toledo, if Toledo fucking tingles your loins, motherfuckers, I want you to pay attention to these three neighborhoods in Toledo. And how I came across these three neighborhoods, right? Uh, I had a little help. I'm not just a one-man show. Sure, I'm beautiful. Sure, I'm fucking awesome. Sure, I know a fuck ton about real estate. But I'm just one man, okay? I can't do it all. I have friends. I have acquaintances. I have associates, people that I work with, people that help me, okay? And I work in a ton of different markets, okay? One of those markets being Toledo. And when I work in Toledo, I work with uh, the people over at Ohio Cashflow and Oz Realty uh, because they are located specifically there, right? I can't fucking live everywhere or have offices everywhere, y'all. For those of you that don't know, Holton Wise, we are headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, but we do deals all over the Midwest. We're here bringing y'all, uh, you know, all these Midwestern cash flow markets, right? So, you know, Californians, New Yorkers, people from New Jersey, people from that dirty fucking shithole Portland. When you're looking for cash flow, you're coming to Holton Wise TV, and we're trying to give you insight, information, and the turnkey experience in all these markets, right? But again, can't live everywhere, so we work with people who do live in each of these markets. And the folks over at Ohio Cash Flow, Oz Realty are the people that we do all of our on-the-ground work with on our Toledo, Ohio deals. And they helped me put together this video, right, uh, getting insight from them, right, and, you know, my own, of course, research and experience. We've come up with three markets, or three neighborhoods, rather, in Toledo 
you all need to pay attention to, right? And the owner over there, Angelo, he actually wrote up this uh, article for you all. And these are his three favorite, and I tend to agree. And we're going to talk about why that is, right? Number one, his very most favorite neighborhood, y'all, is going to be the Five Points area, right? And you could look this shit up, right? You can go to uh, that website. I even got it for you. I'll, I'll, even, I'll even link this for you, all right? So you could do your own unbiased fact-checking, right? You go to unitedstateszipcodes.org, right? Then you could punch in the zip codes. And this works for any zip code in America, y'all. All right, so the five points area, the 43612 zip code in Toledo, Ohio, right? This is, uh, this is Oz Realty's favorite neighborhood, right, in the entire Toledo area, right? Now... Some people might ask me a loaded question like, oh, does that mean that's a good or bad neighborhood? Hmm. Well, that's a loaded question. Good or bad, depending on what you want to do, right? If you're trying to be a cash flow investor, fuck yeah, it's good, right? Now, we got to preface that, though, okay? What I like to do, instead of saying things like good neighborhood, bad neighborhood, I like to grade neighborhoods, y'all. I like to use an A to F grading scale, just like when you were in school, okay? Right? Now... A, neighborhoods. If you're a cash flow investor, especially an out-of-state cash flow investor, right, trying to invest in Toledo from freaking California or that dirty fucking horrible fucking piece of shit hellhole Portland, somewhere fucking terrible like that where the goddamn liberal woke maniacs are running everything and you're like, fuck this, right? You're coming to a place like Toledo, Ohio for cash flow. You're not going to invest in A, neighborhoods, okay? A, neighborhoods or where the wealthy people live, right? I know sometimes you, like, West Coast motherfuckers, like, think that, like, everybody in Ohio don't have any money. Like, y'all think that, like, if you get money, you just move to California. That, that's not true. I'm, like, way fucking richer than, like, 99% of you motherfuckers watching this. But I still live in Ohio, okay? I live in an A neighborhood, right? You ain't gonna buy no fucking rental properties in an A neighborhood, y'all. So, like... Some would be like, is this the best neighborhood? No, motherfucker. The best neighborhood in Toledo would be like A neighborhoods. But that's where like the rich people in Toledo live, okay? That's where the doctors live, right? That's where the lawyers live. That's where the engineers live, the pharmacists, right? In these A neighborhoods, you're going to see like, you know, 95 to 99% owner-occupied houses, right? Owner-occupied houses. Tripping over my words here, right? For cash flow investors, the numbers aren't going to work out because those types of neighborhoods, y'all, uh, they're driven by owner-occupied price points, not cash-on-cash cash returns and cap rates, things of that nature, right? Following that, though, right, you got your B, your C, your D, and your F. That's technically, uh, typically where investors are going to play. That's where us rental property investors are going to play, right? And I play in all four of those uh, asset classes in all my markets, okay? Now, your Ds and your Fs, highest risk, Right? Highest risk, okay? But you have the potential to really crush things like the 2% rule, right? Uh, those are neighborhoods where you really are, 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 should be experienced, should have like a fucking hardcore ass motherfuckers. Uh, you need like SEAL Team 6 of property managers working on your behalf, right? So if you're like a total brand new noob and you're investing in Toledo, I would say those are probably uh, pretty risky for you, right? But like folks like Oz Realty, they can handle that shit for you. But I will give you this caveat, right? Those are the highest risk level neighborhoods. Uh, Section 8 is going to be your friends in those neighborhoods, right? You need Section 8, right? Because when you're in the DNF neighborhoods, y'all, the entire tenant base is super high risk, okay? Super extreme high risk tenants, right? A lot of people bag on Section 8 tenants. They're like, Section 8 tenants are usually low quality people. They fuck everything up. That's true. They do. But when you're in D and F neighborhoods in Toledo, y'all, every motherfucker who's willing to live in D and F neighborhoods is going to be a low quality, high risk tenant. Right. So when all the motherfuckers are low quality, high risk, the Section 8 tenants are actually the ones that pose the least amount of risk to you, because when the entire pool of people is high risk, the ones that get their rent paid for by the government are the ones that are the lowest risk to you, the investor. OK, so that's DNF neighborhoods. Right. And then you move up to your C's and your D's. And this is where you start. Uh, getting to your higher end of neighborhoods that would make sense from a financial perspective for landlords, out-of-state investors, cash flow investors, things like that, right? And this is where you start to see, like, that shift, like, where, uh, you know, Section 8 
doesn't necessarily become that important. Like by the time you get to like a B neighborhood, like C neighborhoods, right? It's probably 50, 50, right? You're going to go cash paying tenants, section eight tenants. You know, you're going to be screening these people. And maybe sometimes you go with a cash tenant. That'll be your better tenant. Sometimes you go section eight. Then when you get to the B area, uh, the majority of your tenants will probably be cash paying tenants and you don't necessarily need to go with the section eight tenants because when you get to that point, you have higher quality people, better credit scores. Uh, they're making more money. They're more stable. And the section eight tenants at that point represent a higher level of risk for them. Right. And that is where like Angelo and Oz, they really like, like that fucking niche. Right. And I get it. Right. Doing property management, like us as property managers, we will rock section eight and DNF neighborhoods for y'all. We will do that. But like, it's hard work for us too. That's why we typically charge more money for it. Right. But believe it or not, uh, we're not trying to just like work way fucking harder, uh, to make the same amount of money. We do like things to be a little easier too. So if you're an investor who likes things that are easy, uh, you may want to focus on a little bit nicer neighborhoods, right? Such as the five points area, which is like a B grade neighborhood, right? Like let, let's look at some of these demographics and statistics, right? So like your housing values, like, dude, this ain't Cali, baby. It's cheap as shit, right? You might think you're in the hardcore ghetto when I tell you this, but you're not. Typical average house value, 76 G's, dude. Household income, 39K, right? And this is where you see uh, like a nice mix of owner-occupied and rental properties, right? So like 56% of the houses in this area, folks, are actually owner-occupied, right? So you can see that there's like some stability in this neighborhood. Only 31% of the properties in these areas here are going to be uh, rented. And then you're going to have a vacancy rate of about 13%, right? So this is like, if you're an investor, you still want to get low-cost properties and you're looking uh, for some cash flow and you're not necessarily super greedy and don't need to get like $20,000 houses that rent for like a thousand bucks a month, you would like a nice little mix. You don't want to end up on the tenants from hell show. You know, you don't want to see your tenants fucking burning your house down or throwing human fucking feces like actual fucking human poo smeared on your walls right you don't want to see me getting punched in the face during an eviction at your house right you might want to stick to like a b neighborhood and the most preferred one from the motherfuckers on the ground five points right pay attention to that one another one that i want y'all to pay attention to is the university of toledo area angelo fucking loves managing college kids right as a matter of fact, so do I. Who doesn't love managing college kids, right? College kids, y'all, actually make great tenants, okay? Now, check this out. I know a lot of you guys, you're like, I don't know, man. College kids, they're always getting drunk, having parties. That's true. They do. They do do that, okay? They do do that, right? But check this out. As property managers, we have to pay attention to risk and reward all the time. And uh, when it comes to risk-reward, right, like, if you have a lot of tenants that are damaging your property, but you have two choices, right? Two choices. Two types of tenants that could damage, damage your property, guys. One tenant damages your property, and then you realize that tenant owns nothing. They are on Section 8, and you decide to sue them for what they have damaged, but then they don't pay because all a judgment is is just a piece of paper. You then have to lien what they own, but, oh, wait, they're on Section 8. They don't fucking own anything. Oh, okay, well, let me just uh, garnish their wages. No problem. Except for they're on Section 8. They don't have any fucking wages, or if they do have wages, they're just moving back and forth from minimum wage job to minimum wage job to minimum wage job. Every time you get a a, a, a garnishment order, you got to pay money to the lawyer to go to court every time. Every time you get that, they just fucking quit that shitty job and get a different shitty job, right? So your odds of collecting on that lawsuit, very, very low, right? Or... The second scenario would be your tenant fucks up your house at like a frat party. But guess what? That tenant's mommy and daddy are paying 30, 40 K a year for tuition, housing, and uh, fucking board, right? Mommy and daddy have some money. Mommy and daddy co-signed the lease. And mommy and daddy are sending that kid to school to do what? Prepare that kid for a good, solid future. They're paying, investing all that money in that kid's future. You know what that kid doesn't want to ruin his future? A fucked up credit report, judgments, unpaid liens, all that shit, right? So, yeah, sometimes those kids get a little wild and they fuck up your house. But guess what? It doesn't matter if you could collect the money from them 
to pay for it, right? So that's why I've always, always, always loved renting to college kids. So you get a nice school like the University of Toledo, but bam you're good, right? It protects your interests, right? That's what it's all about, right? Weighing the risks, right? And that's why Oz Realty, my guy Angelo, when he wrote this article, he's like, oh yeah, mate, I fucking love college kids. He's an Australian motherfucker. That was a fucking horrible, horrible impression of his Australian accent. Um, terrible, fucking terrible, absolutely terrible. Don't judge me based on that. All right, I make money in real estate, not impersonating fucking Australian motherfuckers. Now, Last but not least, y'all, Washington Local School District, right? This area, I would consider, like, dude, we could chop. We could cut hairs. We could split hairs here, right? And, like, some people are like, is this an A neighborhood? Is this a B neighborhood? Is this a B minus neighborhood? Is this a B plus neighborhood, right? People ask me that stuff all the time. Like, dude, they'll be like, James, is this a B neighborhood or a B minus neighborhood? Like, bro, what? Else? It's, what? It's pretty fucking... It's about the same thing, motherfucker. There's, this is rental properties, dude. There's an unlimited amount of variables at all times, okay? There's always going to be variables, folks. Uh, B, B minus, B plus, I don't fucking know. But I will tell you this. Statistically, right, you look at uh, this area, right, like, you know, where, where the high school is located. It's in the 43613 zip code, okay? And you want to talk B neighborhoods, right, like the five points area, right? It's a B neighborhood, uh, I would consider this to be a B neighborhood, right? Um, but, like, technically, it's got a little bit of numbers that are a little bit more impressive uh, than the five points area. So, like, if you want to call five points, like, B minus and this B, you want to call five points B and this B plus, I mean, you can make that argument, right? Because, like, five points, housing values, 76K, right? Housing values here, a little bit higher, 95K, okay? Household income, five points, 39k over here 45k right owner occupied in the five points area 56 percent over here 64 percent rented five points 31 here 27 vacant high point or five points rather 13 here nine right so uh what does that mean for you guys right technically speaking if the houses are in the washington local school district they're going to be a little bit more expensive you're going to see a little bit more owner-occupied folks. People over here are going to be making a little bit more money. Does that necessarily mean you should only invest in this neighborhood versus the five points? No. I think you should be paying attention to both of them. And then at that point, it's not like, dude, should I be here or should I be there? It's where is the best available deal, right? If there is like one specific house, one specific deal that is the best, take down that deal. Just like... The whole point of this video is to show y'all where the best places to invest in the market are versus focusing on which market should I be paying attention to. When you get down to splitting hairs between this neighborhood and the Five Points neighborhood, it's not like, which one? I'm going to go broke if I go here or I'll be a fucking millionaire if I go here. It's not like that, guys. You got to get hyper, super fucking laser tunnel vision on this one and then just start analyzing each deal on its own merits because you should know that in both areas you're in a b-grade neighborhood right in my opinion any of these three neighborhoods are great mixes of risk reward right cost still incredibly low but risk not through the roof again i dabble in it all dude I'll do D, I'll do F, I'll do Section 8. That's why the most popular show I have on Holton Wise TV is the Tennis from Hell show. And if you guys don't believe me that some fucked up shit will happen, please watch that. Y'all want to see crackheads getting evicted? Y'all want to see people smearing poop on the walls? Y'all want to see me get punched in the face by some angry single mom wearing some short shorts? We got it all, because that's the type of fucking chaos that you're going to deal with. I deal with it all, but my goal here is never to steer y'all in one specific thing, I'm not really trying to pigeonhole y'all. What I'm really trying to do is give you guys the information and the insight on all of it, right? Because everything has got good and bad. Everything's got pros and cons. Everything has a risk and reward in the real estate business, right? So I really pride myself on giving you guys all the good, all the bad, and then letting me, you guys make your own informed decisions, right? So 
that's it. That's all I got for you. That's my spiel. Uh, shameless plug, by the way. If you guys are going to do some more investing or even have your own properties in Toledo and you're looking uh, for someone to help you out uh, with more property management or construction type needs and you really need somebody to you know help steer you in the right direction you can reach out to us here at Holton Wise TV or you can reach out directly to Oz Realty again couldn't have made this video without them couldn't have done what I do in that market without them you know it's there's no I in team y'all there's no I in team but there is an I in Oz Realty no there's fucking not no no there's not Realty that's like saying realtor. There's no fucking I in Oz Realty, y'all fucking motherfucker. I was a joke. Anyway, you can reach out to us. Subscribe here on Holton Wise TV. Or again, you can contact them directly. And if you have a property uh, that you need management, they'd be more than happy to help you. They help me with all my deals in Toledo. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.